Canto 1. The Dark Wood of Error. Midway in our life's journey, I went astray from the straight road and woke to find myself alone in a dark wood. And how shall I say what wood that was? I never saw so drear, so rank, so arduous a wilderness. Its very memory gives shape to fear. Death could scarce be more bitter than that place. But since it came to good, I will recount all that I found revealed there by God's grace. How I came to it, I cannot rightly say. So drugged and loose with sleep had I become when I first wandered there from the true way. But at the far end of that valley of evil, whose maze had sapped my very heart with fear, I found myself before a little hill and lifted up my eyes its shoulders glowed already with a sweet rays of that planet whose virtue leads men straight on every road. And the shining strengthened me against the fright whose agony had racked the lake of my heart through all the terrors of that piteous night. Just as a swimmer, who with his last breath flounders ashore from perilous seas, might turn to memorize the wide water of his death. So did I turn, my soul still fugitive from death's surviving image, to stare down that pass that none had ever left alive. And there I lay, to rest from my heart's race till calm and breath returned to me, then rose and pushed up from that dead slope at such a pace, each footfall rose above the last. And lo, almost at the beginning of the rise, I faced a spotted leopard, all trimmer and flow, and gaudy pelt, and it would not pass, but stood so blocking my every turn, that time and again I was on the verge of turning back to the wood. This fell at the first widening of dawn, as the sun was climbing Aries with those stars that rode with him to light the new creation. Thus the holy hour and the sweet season of commemoration did much to arm my fear of that bright murderous beast with their good omen. Yet not so much, but what I shook with dread at the sight of a great lion that broke upon me, raging with hunger, its enormous head held high as if to stake a mortal terror into the very air. And down his track, a she-wolf, drove upon me a starved horror ravening and wasted beyond all belief. She seemed a rack for avarice, gaunt and craving. Oh, many the souls she had brought to endless grief. She brought such heaviness upon my spirit. At sight of her savagery and desperation, I died from every hope of that high summit. And like a miser, eager in acquisition, but desperate in self-reproach when fortune's wheel turns to the hour of his loss. All tears and attrition I wavered back, and still the beast pursued, forcing herself against me bit by bit till I slid back into the sunless wood. And as I fell to my soul's ruin, a presence gathered before me, on the discolored air, the figure of one who seemed hoarse from long silence. At sight of him, in that, friendly, in that friendless waste I cried, have pity on me, whatever thing you are, whether shade or living man. And it replied, not man, though man I once was. And my blood was lombard and my parents Mantuan, I was born, though late, sub Ulio, and bred in Rome under Augustus in the noon of the false and lying God. I was a poet, and sang of old Anchises, noble son, who came to Rome after the burning of Troy. But you, why do you return to these distresses instead of climbing that shining mount of joy, which is the seat and first cause of man's bliss? And are you then that Virgil and that fountain of purest speech, 
My voice grew tremulous. Glory and light of poets, now may that zeal and love's apprenticeship that I poured out on your heroic verses serve me well. For you are my true master and first author, the sole maker from whom I drew the breath of that sweet style whose measures have brought me honor. See there, immortal sage, the beast I flee. For my soul's salvation, I beg you, guard me from her, for she has struck a mortal tremor through me. And he replied, seeing my soul in tears, he must go by another way who would escape this wilderness. For that mad beast that fleers before you there suffers no man to pass. She tracks down all, kills all, and knows no glut but feeding. She grows hungrier than she was. She mates with any beast and will mate with more before the greyhound comes to hunt her down. He will not feed on lands nor loot, but honor and love and wisdom will make straight his way. He will rise between Feltro and Feltro and in him shall be the resurrection and new day of that sad Italy for which Nisus died and Turnus and Euralis. He will rise between Feltro and Feltro, and in him shall be the resurrection and new day of that sad Italy for which Nisus died, and Turnus, and Euryalus, and the maid Camilla. He shall hunt her through every nation of sick pride till she is driven back forever to hell, whence envy first released her on the world. Therefore, for your own good, I think it well you follow me. And I will be your guide and lead you forth through an eternal place where you shall see the ancient spirits tried in endless pain and hear their lamentation as each bemoans the second death of souls. Next, you shall see upon a burning mountain souls in fire and yet content in fire, knowing that whensoever it may be, they yet will mount to the blessed choir. To which... If it is still your wish to climb, a worthier spirit shall be sent to guide you. With her shall I leave you, for the king of time who reigns on high forbids me to come there, since, living, I rebelled against his law. He rules the waters and the land and air, and there holds court his city and his throne. O oh, blessed are they he chooses, and I to him, poet, by that God to you unknown, lead me this way. Beyond this present ill and worse to dread, lead me to Peter's gate and be my guide through the sad halls of hell. And then follow. And he moved ahead in silence, and I followed where he led.